Hello. Welcome to Point of View. Today, I will be talking about those exceptional people who took pains to correct misinformation made by YouTubers, news and social media about China. They are China's battle dragons on YouTube. The words misinformation and disinformation have often been associated with the neologism, fake news, which some scholars define as fabricated information that mimics news media content in form but not in organizational process or intent. CGTN asked Mr. Galloway, do you think it is the right moment for China to introduce the national security legislation for Hong Kong? George Galloway answered, I think it's not only the right moment, it's arguably overdue, because before the coronavirus quietened things for a bit, these so-called protests, in fact, they are riots, not protests, had gotten completely out of hand. People were being set on fire by the rioters. A policeman was being beaten within an inch of their lives by mobs. Now, no country in the world will tolerate this. Least of all the two countries, Britain and the United States, cluck, so loudly about China's security legislation to be applied to a part of Chinese territory. Uh, they are something that we have seen before in the so-called color-coded revolutions in the Ukraine and many other parts of the former USSR. Uh, so this is a playbook that we have seen many times uh, before. Uh, throw the Chinese flags in the sea, hoist the American flag. But these people should know that Hong Kong is China. Hong Kong has always been China. Hong Kong was stolen from China. Uh, China was forced to sign an unequal treaty uh, with the British colonialists, but it didn't mean that Hong Kong was not China. Uh, and so people should not do things, whatever complaints they have, whatever grievances they have, whatever demands they have, they should stop short of throwing their own countries' emblems into the sea and hoisting the emblems of foreign countries, not least because these foreign countries cannot and will not come to your assistance, your aid. They are merely using you. So uh, I urge all the protesters in Hong Kong to turn away from the anti-national path. Nothing like the uh, response of the French police 29 miles away. Of course, uh, the Hong Kong police should uh, try to keep order in as non-violent a way as possible. But no country, absolutely no country, will allow an existential threat to emerge on its territory, to its own sovereignty, uh, uh, without responding in, uh, in a way that... Uh, brings the situation uh, under control. Nathan Rich first came to China in early 2012 as director of technology for a US visual effects company. He found everything was different. The food was foreign to him. The language was unfamiliar and even the scenery was strange. Now he challenges the questionable Western bias against China on social media platforms. He has about 450,000 subscribers on YouTube and his videos normally get about 100,000 views within 24 hours of being published. This might not seem to be a great achievement among YouTubers considering over 8,000 YouTube channels have more than 1 million subscribers as of 2019. However, it is remarkable for a channel that is distinctive for its China-friendly content. For one, I'm Nathan Rich. The situation in Hong Kong has reached a horrifying new level of brutality. Maybe, just maybe, we might have heard of the country. This guy is called the Chinese 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 Chinese
。由于他做的网络视频节目经常指正西方对中国的偏见，且观点犀利、见解独到，受到中外网民的关注。视频播放量在短短一年里就达到两亿多次。香港修例风波以来，内森里奇高度关注事态发展，并频频发声。其反对暴力、有理有据的视频节目很快成为网络热点。As far as I know, the guy who got burned was just an average Hong Kong citizen who was trying to stop protesters from destroying a subway.、Um, and later, he was trying to defuse the situation, and they set him on fire in broad daylight. And since then, I've had people contact me on email and other messages, saying that they're afraid,、um, and you know that they're afraid for their lives, afraid for their safety in Hong Kong. They want help from me. 在得到众多网民支持的同时，李奇也遭到了反对者的威胁。So this is one on YouTube. It says, "F you, Chinese imperialist! Don't ever step in America, or I will effing murder you." So this one just says, "Don't upload pro-CCP video anymore, or we will kill you." East Turkestan Army. Nathan Li Qi, 2012, he when he traveled for the first time to China, was surprised to find that his views about China were wrong. The reason that I stayed in China was I was overwhelmed by the difference between how China really was and how I thought it was going to be. Every time that I went back to America from China, I discovered that a lot of my friends seemed to have these weird misconceptions about China, and were telling me how China was, even though they had never been there. And so I started to build up this sort of sense of annoyance with people not understanding China and misrepresenting it. And you know, I used to read in the news or watch these videos about China, and none of them seemed exactly right compared to the experiences that I actually had in China. And so,、um, you know, there was something building up inside of me where I was getting sick of the way that people were misrepresenting China. 二零一八年，内森·里奇开始制作关于中国的网络视频节目。由于他爱吃火锅，便起了一个中文网名，叫“火锅大王”。他努力弥合中国和西方之间的信息鸿沟，消除关于中国的谣言和误解。在李奇看来，香港激进暴力分子在英式教育中长大，并深受西方媒体的影响，从而并不了解真正的中国。李奇希望他制作的视频能够点醒那些激进暴力分子，为香港的和平提供一份力量。Hong Kong doesn't stand on its own. It's got an entire family of people on its side, and while not everyone in the family agrees with each other, make no mistake, blood is thicker than water. I may never be considered part of China, but Hong Kong always will. New moves, aka Meng Seng Quek, stated in his YouTube description page, "I am a Canadian." Who briefly dabbled in political YouTube before heading to Asia in 2014 for teaching and exploration. I restarted my channel in 2019 in order to counter the misinformation from Western media, including YouTube, which I am afraid could lead to unnecessary war, like we have seen in Iraq, etc. I hope my content will foster understanding and peace. Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm sitting here in one of my favorite spots, and as you can see behind me is、um, this awesome area. It's called Beijing Lu, and right behind me there, you can kind of see. One of the major intersections that crosses into Beijing Loop. We're giving you this this kind of cool background.、Uh, I thought you guys would really appreciate that because usually in my apartment the background is terrible. If this is your first time watching my videos, I just want to say welcome. It's basically me giving you on the ground information about what life is like here in China, especially in Guangzhou. If you're interested in seeing what real life is like, what normal life is like. What traveling is like in China? Definitely stick around and please subscribe. What I want to talk to you guys today is the reasons behind the Western 
brainwashing. So I've made a lot of videos that show Western brainwashing. You can see the, the mainstream media, how effective it is at brainwashing Hong Kongers, people that live in Taiwan, just anyone who consumes the mainstream media that is owned by only about six companies in the world. I've made a lot of videos proving that it exists, but I haven't really talked about the motive. Why try to convince people that China's an evil country when it really isn't? I'm, I'm starting to realize that I think it's actually to keep people like me from getting back in touch with my motherland. I mean, there's millions of people like me. I think Western nations realize that if all their millions of Chinese diaspora woke up to the fact that China is actually a really great country and it's probably way more accepting of them than their new Western countries, that is going to hurt. They're just going to leave, man. They're just going to book it, get a ticket to China, live in China, be treated with respect, get really good jobs, be able to get promoted with no problem. Why live in a country that's always going to treat you like a second-class citizen? So another really important reason is because Chinese university students, they make up the great majority of international students in the world. They're very capable. If you look at MIT, if you look at some of the best schools in America, you see these Chinese students there that are doing groundbreaking research. And if Western countries can capture them, and not let them return back to China. If they're able to brainwash them and convert them into hating their motherland, and that's really great for Western countries because as you know, America, Canada, Australia, they depend on immigration. Their populations are slowing down. So they need people to emigrate to their countries to keep their economies going. Chinese immigrants bring money, they bring really great education, they bring a great culture. They love to say Asians are the model minority and that's because their cultures are really respectful and they know how to follow the rules and respect the law and be positive contributors to their societies. I mean, if their whole life they love living in China, how would you be able to steal them away and to keep them in your Western country so they can start paying taxes, start taking up those jobs that are difficult, take up those technical jobs? So Extracts from Cyrus Jansen's website. I'm an international business consultant, entrepreneur, speaker and American expat. I've been living abroad since 2007 and have been fortunate to call the cities of Shanghai, Hong Kong, and now Vancouver my home during these past 13 years. I create weekly YouTube blogs about China, and its role on the world stage, in addition to creating Mandarin videos on Douyin, China's TikTok, sharing insights into Western culture for over 300,000 Chinese followers. I first traveled to China in January 2007 and until this day I have yet to read a single positive article about China from mainstream Western media. Why is Western media so negative towards China? Why does Western media refuse to share anything positive about the country of China? And why is Western media so scared of China? We're going to be answering these questions and more in today's episode. Let's get started. Hi everybody, my name is Cyrus Jansen. I'm an American expat and entrepreneur, and if you're new to this channel, we're making weekly vlogs about China and its role in society today. Now, the inspiration for today's video came from a recent tweet from Eva Doe, a Washington Post journalist, where she shares this. China has gone into a soft form of food rationing nationwide. Everyone from Alibaba's Jack Ma to elementary students are under pressure to comply. Some restaurants switch to half portions, others issue fines. Now the problem with this story is the tone that Eva is implying here. She wants you to believe that China is having a food crisis, that China is unable to feed its people, and that restaurants are having to issue fines, people can't go into restaurants and order food as they wish, and that China is actually appearing very weak right now. This is really the goal of many Western media sites right now, is they're trying to portray China in the most negative way possible. This is a tweet from Sean Ryan, an American China analyst that has been living in Shanghai for close to 20 years now. I find it depressing I have to post videos of me in supermarkets and restaurants to prove there's food on the shelves and people can order what they want because media sites like the Washington Post lie about the food situation in China. And this is just a great example of how Western media likes to really twist the facts about China. The reality is is that the United Nations came out and said that there will be a global food crisis within the next 50 years. 
China, what they decided to do was to start instituting a policy and simply saying, look, let's be a little bit more mindful of the food that we are wasting. Now, if any of you have traveled to China before, you'll know that many Chinese people go to restaurants. They typically order dishes anywhere from 10 to 20 of them, put them in a table and share them in large groups of people, family style. It's a great way to enjoy a meal. Unfortunately, at times it can be very wasteful. So China is simply saying, let's just be a little bit more mindful of how we're consuming our food. Let's try our best to not waste food. So again, China's doing something positive, but Western media is going to twist that and they're going to twist that in a way to make you think that China is struggling because that is the goal of their job. Daniel Dumbrell. Daniel Dumbrell, a Canadian businessman who has lived in the Hong Kong SAR and Shenzhen for over 11 years, gave his opinion on how foreign media report China and what he thinks makes people in the Hong Kong SAR keep protesting. He also says he wants his children to be proud of being Chinese. This, this might seem like a little bit of an old, ancient history kind of a topic to bring up, but I wanted to talk about the bill that sparked the entire movement in Hong Kong that's been going on for months now. And the reason I wanted to do something on this topic is because there isn't really anything out there that gives a comprehensive, all-inclusive, and truthful commentary on the extradition bill. Furthermore, a lot has happened recently that ties into the full story of the extradition bill. I'm going to try and keep this as brief as possible. You've probably noticed that I have some new long format videos where I sit down with a guest who lives in China to have a general unscripted chat about China and or their own personal experiences elsewhere. Because as silly as it may seem, there are a lot of people who are surprised that there are intelligent, funny and interesting people who are very well thought out, who are from China or have chosen to move to China. Now, you may not think I'm any of those things, but I'm hoping that by doing that series, I can expose you to some of the people who you will find to be all of those things. But back onto topic. When I do these info-related videos on a specific topic, I want to try to keep it as brief as possible with the most important, relevant, and missing information included. So regarding the extradition bill, as many of you know, it was a bill that would have allowed China to extradite criminals from Hong Kong over to the mainland side. As you are probably led to believe, this would have allowed China to grab anyone they wanted from Hong Kong whenever they wanted, including visitors who are simply passing through Hong Kong for a few hours on a... That is total BS. Hong Kong has extradition agreements with other countries, including the US, but they don't have one with Taiwan or China. Interestingly enough, criminals were extradited back to China from Hong Kong before handover under the British, but nobody really cared about it then. People are only really taking an interest in it now. From a technical standpoint, this extradition bill was actually a proposal to simply modify Hong Kong's existing fugitives ordinance so that it included China and Taiwan into this system. The original reason for pushing this through was because a Hong Kong man named Chan Tong Kai had murdered his pregnant girlfriend in Taiwan, folded her body into a suitcase, discarded it, and then flew back to Hong Kong. He actually admitted to the murder, but there was no mechanism to send him back to Taiwan. And the Hong Kong legal system doesn't allow for much flexibility outside of strictly following the rules. He was scheduled to be released in October 2019, and Hong Kong wanted to update their fugitives ordinance to be able to send him back to face justice in Taiwan because of the layover to somewhere else. Well, The five dragons, in this alliance have worked relentlessly to debunk inaccurate claims, and news on China from both within and without. They are brave, focus, and true. We have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Let us know the videos you like by leaving you comments below. We have weekly videos, so be sure to hit the red subscribe button below. Bye.